Hello, everyone. This is uh, the Kubert community meeting where uh, users and developers get a chance to talk about uh, what's been going on, talk about new features and bugs, and um, how we're using Kubert. I'm going to post uh, meeting notes out to chat. Um, feel free to open up that document and add your attendance. Uh, we do track that information. And I will share my screen. Okay. Um, we usually give uh, a few minutes at the beginning for, uh, for new members to introduce themselves. Do we have anybody new this week that would like to say hello? Yes, hi. Can you hear me? I hear you. Hello, welcome. Hi, thank you very much. My name is Aurel Mizan. I'm from Reddit Israel, from the networking team. Happy to be here. Welcome aboard. Glad to have you. Thank you. And anyone else want to say hi? Okay. Um, Ryan plugged a couple uh, bullet points into the agenda and says he's going, thought he was going to be a few minutes late. Ryan, are you here? Yeah, I'm here. I, I made it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Go ahead. Sure. Thanks. Okay. Uh, so the first topic I wanted to, to talk about was um, I thread I started on the mailing list. Um, it's about Qbert, CloudNet, um, and adding a, a field to the metadata. Um, and so I, I basically what I, what I outlined in, in this thread is just um, the current metadata that Qbert offers as part of CloudNet. Um, and I was wondering, you know, how it came to be that you know, what the current metadata is and, you know, if there's a possibility to extend it. And, you know, one of the fields that I was interested in, interested, interested in adding was um, instance type. Um, right now that's not currently there. And that's kind of one that, you know, could be used for flavors or whatever, like you know, maybe hiding infrastructure details and you passing it through the cloud metadata that a lot of other cloud providers use. Um, so I don't know, I was wondering about thoughts kind of in general about this topic. Yeah, so hey, um, yeah, the metadata field can certainly be expanded. Um, I'm not super uh, familiar with the instance type uh, value there and its consistency across other clouds or other infrastructure as a service platforms. Um, what would you, so you mentioned flavors. You, do you think that's the primary thing that would be used for or can you think of anything else? Yeah, that, that's what I would expect is, um, and, and that's, I kind of pulled it from like, I looked at um, AWS and their the amount of the data that they have for their credit and that was you know, one of the ones they offered. Um, but the, yeah, and that's what I would expect it to be used for. Okay. Yeah, that can make sense. Yeah, I don't see why not. Um, sure. All right, I, I'll, I mean, I guess I'll follow up with a, a maybe an issue or enhancement. Uh, okay, can, and so if harder. somebody doesn't use a flavor, for example, uh, and we're talking about the flavor API, uh, okay. uh, if they don't use it, then I guess we just don't provide that value. Would that be it? Yeah, I, that, that's what I would expect. Like, I, I don't think it's something that, you know, necessarily has to be, um, you know, maybe something that people always need to use. I mean, if it's, there isn't a flavor API. Like maybe it's something that we can use as an enhancement if something that, you know, if there is a flavor API or some sort of custom thing that we could leverage. Sounds reasonable. Um, in, in OpenStack, for example, this instance type represents something very specific that, um, um, like it, it, it's well-defined um, flavor um, of that instance type. So, I mean, I wonder how how we're going to shape this here um, for people who are um, not using flavor API. I mean, I'm not sure uh, how do the, how will they 
No, what does it translate to? I think it just will get set. If they don't use the flavor API, then it just there's just no instance type. That would be my expectation, but um, the flavor API may also not be well defined, right? I mean, is there will there be something that we can represent as an instance type with the flavor API? What does instance type uh, directly correlate to an open stack? It says, uh, for example, large, um, probably just just re references um, a well-defined uh, flavor. OK, so what I would expect is if somebody's using the, the new flavor API and kubevert, then the name of the global flavor or I guess that they're namespace flavors as well. The name of the flavor would be the instance type directly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right. Now let's see. How so we'll uh, maybe to take a step back for a second, Ryan, uh, what would that metadata be used for? How would that be helpful to have that within the guest? Like what, um, what would use it? Yeah. Um, so the, um, if we have any sort of specific things that, um, like the like we like, one of the things that maybe we extend flavors to um, mean a certain thing, and the cloud init scripts, um, you know, if this means something to kind of during startup for the guest, um, when they see this kind of flavor, they need to, you know, maybe do some I don't know specific things to to that flavor. Um, then they would they would do that in there as part of the cloud event. So it's just kind of like the passing through that that flavor to the guests so they can do any custom thing. Yeah, I see. Okay, if it's useful, sure. Okay. All right. Yeah, we'll follow up. Um, thanks. Okay. okay All right. You? You yeah. Yeah. Go back to the doc and. Uh, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Um. So second one. Um. Second one's. Uh. I call it shared CPU QS. Um, this is an issue I created. Um, this this issue, um, I guess the maybe the easiest way to explain it is like if we have um, if we have UQ resorts vCPUs, um, if we have if we're sharing a physical CPU, um, there's still some parts of the um, like when we when we slice up this GPU and get and allocate those slices to a to a VM. Um, there are still shared parts of the CPU between um, the the VM that that has that all or I guess all the different VMs that have those slices, like you know like Dell three cache, so that the last level cache would be shared and and other things. Um, and so there are um, ways that we can um, I guess uh, regulate you know how those resources are used, and um, Linux has these res control groups. Um, that would allow us to do this, and this is exposed in in Qvert, or in uh, Livert um, now, and we can actually um, control, you know, the access to that cache and memory bandwidth and so on. And the use case for this is when we have, you know, high performance um, or performance sensitive workloads that need to be on a um, that need to be on a node. We want to make sure that um, you know when we're allocating those CPU slices that they're not going to be in any way interrupted, um, or if we're packing a um, a node with a lot of workloads. We want to make sure that um, we're we're not impacting performance at all um, on for those workloads. What are some you know what people think about this as a as a topic? Actually, before I, before I actually open it up, so the my assumption here is that um, or the ask for this issue is that um, is to expose this as a as an API or it's not an API. Expose this as a um, on v the VMI API. So just like in the way that we can we now expose um, vCPUs, it would essentially we would expose these knobs on that API so that they can be controlled. Um, but this wouldn't be like, um, this wouldn't have to, anything to do with the scheduling of these resources. The cube scheduler would still be in control of that. You know, there's some either CPU manager or whatever would still handle that, but it's just exposing them and, and wiring it up to the for launcher pod and then wiring it up to the actual, um, wiring all the way down to Livert and actually to the, the guest. So what are what are some people's 
thoughts on this. Ryan, what, what, uh, so just, just take a step back. I mean, um, Libert until now was in the, in the regular environment, like for example, OpenStack or Rev, uh, Libert was acting as a, as a node manager and it was creating a C group um, for, um, for each of these individuals, VMs, and, um, and uh, these resources has been controlled uh, by Libvirt um, across the node. And um, it was uh, easy for Libvirt to coordinate um, these kind of uh, resource allocations to these VMs. Uh, in our case, this is uh, very much different because uh, the C group that is being created uh, for, for our VM is being created by, uh, by Kubelet. And um, the resources that are being allocated, essentially they are being allocated by uh, Kubernetes, by the CPU manager. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, from there, uh, what we can do uh, in our environment in the, in the Virt Launcher, we could take um, these allo already allocated resources for us and uh, we could uh, pin or not pin uh, the virtual CPUs to these already allocated resources. Um, the VM will not see anything beyond what uh, Kubernetes has allocated to this uh, virt launcher pod. Um, so uh, I'm not yeah. sure how, how exposed. That's my expectation. Would... Yeah, that's my expectation is that's, that the Kubernetes would still do all of that. Like I will always, the only thing I'm saying is that, um, is that um, if, if like Kubernetes doesn't have this, um, doesn't expose this currently. But what I'm saying is that, you know, if if we were to imagine that it did right now, like just like in the way that that Kubernetes exposed us to um, or exposes the ability to um, assign vCPUs, right? We needed to, Qvert needed to come along and also wire this up to virtual machine uh, instance APIs and so that the guests could actually use it, right? It's it's essentially the exact same ask is that um, that we, we wire this up and then this would allow, if we wanted to, either custom solutions or just you know someone to come along and enhance the CPU manager to actually do the assigning of these resources. Does that does it? Do you follow me on that, Fly? No, unfortunately not. Um, so, uh, are you familiar with the um, uh, with the um, CPU with dedicated CPUs placement concept in in Kubert? Um, a little bit, yeah. So when when we request when the user requests um, a dedicated CPUs uh, to be assigned for his VMs in Kubernetes, uh, what it will do it will uh, force um, uh, force uh, the pod um, to request uh, uh, to have a, a guaranteed QoS um, in mm -hmm. Kubernetes, and then uh, this will force the CPU manager to allocate resources, dedicated resources, uh, for Kubernetes uh, for for that. VM, and then um, the virt launcher will will essentially wire um, to what uh, wire the virtual CPUs to the physical CPUs that has been already allocated. And um, this way, this is the only way for us to control what CPUs do we get. If we expose uh, the knobs that you've uh, mentioned, uh, people will be able to. Um, request or, or somehow pin their virtual CPUs to CPUs that we don't have in the pod, that this, the Kubernetes CPU manager didn't allow us um, to actually see in the pod. So I don't see how, how that would be useful. So my, my expectation is that, so I, I'm making the assumption with this request that the CPU manager or any solution, like it doesn't, doesn't matter, something that plugs into the scheduler, We'll be able to expose um, the CPUs in the way that we asked, or the way that we need them to actually to use these knobs. Um, the CPU manager at the moment doesn't have that. Uh, I mean, yeah, it doesn't. I, I'm, 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 I know it doesn't. It, what, what I'm saying is that it can be extended to do that, though, right? I mean, that's 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 what I'm assuming. Yeah, so I think this is the first task to do, um, to extend the CPU manager um, in Kubernetes. And only then we'll try to find a solution how to use that in, in Kubernetes. Yeah, but well, what I would argue, also argue is that 
extending the CPU manager though isn't necessarily a blocker here because what if I what if we use a different what if we use a custom solution that's not using the CPU manager? What if we like th this is just sort of the CPU manager is sort of it's like we could still like you could still have this feature in Qvert even if the CPU manager like you don't for instance you don't have to use a CPU manager today if you want to leverage um, attaching vCPUs to um, to uh, VMIs in Qvert. You could use well, it. We require that. requires this because otherwise it may it may be very harmful to pin CPUs that are not allocated to that VM. So we we as Qubert prevent that today. I see. Okay. It's it's hard. It's already hard. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean we yeah, I mean internal, I mean we we don't use a CPU manager. Okay. I see. Yeah, I mean it, even if you use though, even if you do use the CPU manager, I mean, I mean, I still like, yeah, I mean, I, I still think like it's, so is your concern, Vladek, that like if, um, if Qvert enables this and CPU manager does not have it, then we're just gonna cause problems. Is that what your concern is? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, and uh, also it's, uh, users may express uh, topologies and, um, and um, pinning requirements for uh, for CPUs that are not in their C group, um, which which will not it just will not work. Also, um, these requirements they uh, so the, the deliberate API it's uh, it's very specific. It um, you can say uh, which which vCPU do you want to be pinned to which physical CPU. And uh, we also don't do this. Um, we can uh, do calculations based on uh, what has been presented to us. And um, uh, there's a certain, certain algorithm um, that we use to, um, to allocate, uh, to, to basically arrange uh, the virtual CPUs across the physical CPUs that has been allocated for us. And um, we don't use a specific uh, numbering that like like the uh, um, Libert API uh, suggests. Okay. B because otherwise, it, it just it's not possible. I mean, it's not scalable uh, to uh, specify a specific uh, CPU number if you have uh, hundreds of nodes. Uh, how would you know what is available and what is not available on the node? Yeah, I mean, I get. Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, I guess like where. Kind of where where I'm at. It's like I, I've made my assumption is that is that we could is that we could do this without the CPU manager. Just making the assumption that someone is is yeah. I mean, okay. I mean, I guess um, okay. I mean, I guess for now. I mean, I I if that's like a requirement in Qvert, then um, I, think, I think one one way forward is to use. Um, um, is for example to uh, maybe use hooks, and uh, and then uh, if you use uh, such a hook, you would be able. And you're not using a CPU manager, um, then you would just request a regular VM without any kind of guarantees, and then use a hook uh, to modify um, your vCPU allocations or or vCPU placement on top of whatever you you prefer on the node. But it will not be a, a generic solution. I don't know. I'm not speaking a lot, but I don't know what other things. <laughs> yeah, I know. We like that's kind of where. So that was kind of where we thought about it originally. Vladik is using the hooks. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I know. I they kind of wanted to do more of a general a general solution. That yeah, that we could. Um, I think. But I mean, I get. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, Ryan. I, I, I'm just saying that I, I think uh, what we need to do is to um, is to suggest how to modify um, the CPU manager uh, in a way that it would be able to accept other policies. I know that um, there were a lot of uh, discussions inside NVIDIA. Um, for example, Kevin, I think he participated in uh, in lots of different designs how to uh, make. Um, uh, the CPU manager um, interact with the uh, with the scheduler better. 
uh, to represent uh, Numa and, and so on. So I, I think that effort is, uh, for me, is the best uh, path forward. All right, I guess, so then, um, yeah, I mean, thanks, Vladek. I guess then, so we can, I guess for now we can leave it. I mean, I guess, uh, let me see what I can, what we can do in the, the CPU manager side. And, and, and Vladek, can, um, do you mind adding your comments to the, to this issue? Just so that like, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, just so we have, have it for, for record and um, can reference it and so on. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Vladek. Okay. Um, Vasily, AMD Sev. Uh, yeah, uh, hello, everyone. So, uh, some time ago, I uh, raised this topic in the mailing list about AMD secure encrypted virtualization and also raised this PR with some initial implementation. Uh, well, as a background, the uh, SCV technology basically allows the encryption of uh, memory for virtual machines in runtime. And uh, yeah, this PR tries to enable this uh, functionality in Kubelt, basically. Mm. The issue here is that, uh, well, let's say, this uh, technology is uh, th there are two steps actually. One is uh, the uh, launching of the VMs with the encrypted memory, and the other step is the attestation, which allows uh, the end user to verify that uh, uh, the system is running on a genuine AMD platform with encryption, etc. So uh, this PR actually focuses on uh, implementing the uh, launching of CFVMs. So it's uh, it just adds the uh, some uh, fields to the uh, VM spec, uh, which I'm up to revert uh, API and basically that at the end allows running the VM. And yeah, uh, and th there were several comments in this PRs and PR and uh, there was one concern that uh, uh, without attestation it. Uh, maybe not very beneficial to introduce this now. So I just wanted maybe to discuss how to go with it f further with this pull request. Um, let's say uh, attestation is a bit a complex topic, uh, how to do it. And it's still very much work in progress now. So uh, attestation is an interactive process between the user and actually Kuyamo. And uh, with Kubert, uh, the tricky part is that Kubert doesn't talk to Kuyamo directly, but it uh, talks through libvert. And as of now, uh, there are some missing APIs in libvert and that uh, uh, basically doesn't allow to implement the attestation step uh, completely, let's say. So I just wanted to discuss uh, maybe uh, some opinions about that uh, if it makes sense to introduce uh, this uh, functionality like gradually step by step starting with this PR for example which just allows launching the VMs without the attestation and then um, w when the APIs in the world, they become available uh, then introducing the attestation process for those VMs because and now it's kind of uh, this. <laughs> this is not moving. I, I just want to get some clarity on how to proceed with that. So if there are comments regarding it, it would be nice to hear. I think it makes uh, from my sorry. I have silly. Um, I think from my point of view, it's um, it makes sense to um, to gradually, like incrementally. Um, Introduce these uh, these changes uh, in a way that will allow us to uh, to later uh, introduce the at the attestation part, and I think uh, the current uh, API that you presented is uh, makes a complete sense. Uh, I, I just dropped the ball there and I I forgot I didn't follow up with the with the API. So it's a little sorry about that. Uh -huh. So basically, it's fine to have the just basic. Uh... Uh, support of a CV, and then we 
we can handle the attestation. I, I already thought about the attestation process. So what uh, I was thinking about uh, is that basically the attestation can be uploaded to some external service and uh, but Kubert needs to provide some APIs to interact uh, with uh, with the running VM actually. So yeah, I started uh, populating some proposal, design proposal. It's still kind of in early state. It's also, there is also a link in this PR to that. And yeah, that we can handle when Levert provides the APIs. Yeah. So basically, uh, yeah. I think going forward, we'll need to um, uh, to consult with the David Gilbert. Um, he is a well, at least in, in Red Hat, mm -hmm. he's a, um, he's the one who's a, more familiar with the with the advances in the attestation and all of that uh -huh. um, area. Um, my my initial concern was uh, that uh, the API was too specific. Um, but um, the way it is right now, for me, it makes sense. And uh -huh. I don't know what other things. Okay. Well, ju just may maybe, uh, yeah, as a background, there are other similar technologies, like, for example, from Intel, TDX, uh, which is not covered in this PR, but it provides pretty much the same functionality. Uh, also, uh, AMD CV. Uh, uh, there are extensions like ES, which is encrypted state, and SNP, uh, secure nested paging. So they bring some new ways of doing the attestation, that what I know. And uh, at least ES uh, is currently supported in the world. I'm not sure if SNP guests. Uh, can be launched uh, via Libvirt as of now, to be honest. Uh, so, so yeah, the, the, the issue here that uh, the technology itself is still work in progress, I would say, but uh, the, the basic uh, APIs uh, for launching the, for example, SCV VMs are in place and currently it's possible to enable that in Kubert. Yeah, I agree. So if uh, there are no objections, I can, uh, yeah, I probably still need to address some other comments in this PR. I can then continue working on it. If there are no other thoughts on that. Well, basically that's uh, what I wanted to discuss for now. Uh, if it's fine, I will continue working on this and maybe bring it to some good shape then. So it can be reviewed and merged to that. Sounds good. And uh, I see the, the last uh, note on here is 23 days ago for a rebase. Oh yeah, <laughs> Quite well. I, I I was on vacation. <laughs> so, ah, okay. Welcome back. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. Um, Sounds good. This is going to be a, a great feature for Kubert. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. Then that's. Okay. Thank you. Um, and Michael with arm. Um, ah oh, yes. Uh, yes, uh, it, is, it, it is Michael. Uh, I was working on the proposal of uh, enabling Zen hypervisor on Kubert recently. And uh, the original plan was to submit a design document by the end of this month. But recently our management team adjusted some works that are ongoing. So the plan for the Zen supporting proposal was deprioritized. So uh, my uh, investigating and uh, testing on this topic will suspend and uh, it may not be resumed in a very close future. 
Uh, yes, does that does uh, the does not the community know about uh, this change, and uh, it doesn't uh, impact any other contribution or uh, or work uh, on Kubovert from ARM. And uh, thanks to everybody for discussing the idea in the previous meetings. Oh, very sorry to hear about the deprioritization. Uh, Michael, are you going to be uh, sticking with uh, the project or are you moving on to other work? Uh, in close future, I will be on other assignments. Uh, also, <laughs> sorry to be losing you. And uh, uh, hopefully you come back to us. <laughs> um, I will, I think. Thank all right. <laughs> Your contributions have been very valuable and it's been uh, really nice working with you. Uh, thank you. This is a very warm community. I feel that. Okay, Edward, you're next. Hi, one second. Not a problem. Hi. Uh, okay, so it, it's pretty straightforward question. Uh, we have uh, today the ability to do a hot plug. Uh, I mean, hot plug and hot unplug for SROV interfaces for VFs, but mainly for the migration at the moment. So the question is, do we want to do to generalize it for the generic host devices and the GPUs? And and that's that's more or less my question. Sorry. Um my take on this is that uh, it would uh, it would depend on several things. Um, first of all, not all um, not all host devices can be uh, easily unplugged. Um, that would be my my main concern. So is it like, so the question is, is it, is it something we are not interested at this moment or we are interested in, but we need to limit it or make it uh, controllable or, or what? I, I, I mean, I, I think we need to test it. Um, that would be, for example, I know that, um, Yeah, I'm not sure. It's it's really the use of um, um, how how's this device is being used in the in the guest. Um, if some accelerators can be unplugged um, without any interruptions, but I'm not entirely sure that uh, that all. Um, can be pluggable, but although we can. There are probably ways around that, and probably ways to express it. Uh, is this device pluggable or, un or unpluggable um, on the API? Um, let, let's discuss it further. I mean, I'm I'm not sure right now. Okay, so it's a uh, it's not an immediate uh, requirement. So there's no no point in in discussing it. So we, we could wait until someone asks for it, I guess. I have a, I have a question. We support uh, hot plug and uh, hot unplug for uh, disks. Is it something that can be reused by this uh, PR? I mean, there, we already have working implementation of uh, hot plugging disks. And do you, is is that the same delivered commands or is it different for this? No, it's the, the host devices are one thing and disk are something else. So this is 
This is similar to the SRV. So we 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 limited the on plug and hot plug only for uh, for SRV devices because we mark them as such. So we we know that we can do it. We don't do it for any other host devices, but the disks are, I think, it's something else. It's not under host devices, even. Uh, okay, I understand. I guess we can continue. Yeah, and let's... Uh... Let's get some comments into this pull request um, one way or another. Uh, uh, that that pull request is just uh, generalizing the, just in the code, giving it an option to do it with others. It's not implementing. So mm -hmm. just takes out from making it a specific for SRV and make it available if someone wants or needs to edit for the others. But it's not, it's just a, uh, I just mentioned it because it allows us to to continue or not to continue. Sure. Uh, and it's been uh, many days since, yeah, nobody's even commented on your pull request, so. No, but it's it's, it's okay, that part is fine. Don't worry, yeah, okay. it's not urgent. Okay. So I'm confused. Are you saying that you just want this pull request to remain in place? Yeah, it's not, the, the topic was not exactly this pull request. The topic was, do we need to use hot, hot plug or for, for all other host devices or part of them? And the answer at the moment is that it's maybe. So, and there is no specific need uh, that was requested from anyone to this. So we can put it on on standby, I guess. The PR itself can be reviewed, but it's not on there. Okay. Does that sound right then? Sorry, I, I cannot see, so. Oh, uh, I just tacked on a note saying no specific need at this time. Functionality can be placed on hold. Yeah, I guess so. All right, Radic, that's, that's the, the right answer. Yeah. Okay, well, at least we, we have it searchable. So if uh, the topic comes up again, We'll be able to revisit this this bullet point. Okay, uh, Itamar, uh, you're next. Hi everyone, uh, can you hear me right? Uh, I think you need to volume up just a little bit. Is it fine now? Much better. Okay. Um, so I want to share uh, an experience I had and maybe raise a discussion about it. Um, so I was dealing with a a task not related, not related to factoring or anything. And um, during this task, I stumbled upon a render lunch manifest function, which is a very, very long function, something like 2000 uh, lines of code long, um, which is very crucial to our flow um, and basically uh, translates, uh, converts um, a VMI manifest to, um, to a vert launcher pod. Um, so uh, I wondered how, how this function got to be so long and uh, so messy. So what I wanted to do is stop what I'm doing and have a PR that will simply split this um, long function into sub function. Um, so it would just be an initial work of uh, refactoring. And the idea was to start the, 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 the refactoring work and to encourage others to also make uh, more incremental changes until the code looks better. Um, in practice, um, the experience was very different. Um, so at the beginning, 
um, because, because I moved a lot of code around, if you look at the diff on the PR, it seems like I removed a lot of code and added a lot of code. So I got a lot of feedback for code I didn't even write. So after a lot of feedback cycles like that, I said, okay, um, I want feedback specifically on my test, which is um, the code that I write, the, the splitting it to sub functions, and that's it. Um, but the PR didn't really um, got into convergence. Um, basically more and more people um, um, giving uh, feedback about how we could uh, take it a little bit further and make the code a little bit better. And, uh, and while I agree that we have more work to do, I ask myself why uh, specifically, and we were we talking about refactoring, uh, we don't really use incremental changes. Instead, we have an, an expectation of the refactoring being perfect and being um, um, you know, 100%. And um, my question is, I guess, I mean, let's be honest, uh, refactoring is not that fun. Um, it's not that impressive thing to do on your resume. Um, so what I would, what I wonder is, I mean, what would encourage people to stop their work and and do refactoring um, when when this is the case? And we have like a, a proof that this is a problem, since this huge and crucial function hadn't, hadn't been refactored for a long, long time. Um, so yeah, just wanted to raise a discussion about it, um, a general discussion. Um, Itamara, I'm also interested in that discussion because actually I, I'm sorry I missed your PR, but I'm also trying to refactor exactly that function because I need it um, for an, another work. So okay, I will have a look to your PR, but I, I'm exactly trying to split the, this function. Okay, it's good that more uh, people PR, feel like Maybe it. you can add a link to, to the PR. Yeah, sure. please, because I, I, I miss that. And if we are doubling the work is... Uh... Sure, give me a minute. So maybe just to give us some background of why I need the split. Uh, so actually that that function uh, um, gives interesting information how the VM will be scheduled. So if we want to add some kind of functionality or additional pod that needs to have the same um, schedulability as the VM, um, yeah, basically all, the, all these kind of information are in, the, in, in that function. Okay, I will have a look. Um. Thank you. Yeah, you can see my uh, discussion there with uh, David. Yeah. Um, so to sum up all this discussion, I think that basically uh, what David is saying is that this refactoring uh, work is not complete. And I say that I agree, but I think we should merge it anyways because we should work in incremental changes and encourage people to do uh, refactoring works without it having to last for months and, and being absolutely perfect. Too bad that David isn't here. <laughs> and it may seem like a a, a big PR, but really it's it's very simple. It's moving code around to sub functions. So the diff is really big, but mm -hmm. it's not that scary. I think one thing that may help is uh, is just schedule some some time uh, with the people who are mainly uh, objecting and just go th try to go over it together. Sure. So I wanted to I wanted to give one 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 thing. Let's start with the fact that there are people that do like to do it faster. <laughs> so it's uh, like you have one at least in the in, uh, in here. And and I the fact that uh, it is, the refactoring is not done like in a regular basis, it's a, is a problem because then we reach 
we reached to code that is very complicated because it's the previous uh, developer that added to a specific place, he didn't do the refactoring. So the next one will have to, will, will, may decide not to do it as well. Edward, we're getting and a so, lot of background noise from you. Yeah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I think you're at yeah. the airport. Or... <laughs> and yeah, I, I fully agree. I think Almost. They... <laughs> um, my point is that the cure for this is um, making um, small incremental changes on a regular basis uh, without the expectation of every uh, refactoring work to be uh, perfect. It's okay to, to just do an initial work um, and to agree that this um, gets us to a better situation while there is still a lot of work to do. But I mean, this, the reality is just is that nobody touched this function for a really long time. And this is not just, uh, this is a, a crucial function, which is at the heart of our flow. So yeah. I, I, Itamar, I think... do you have a specific goal or is just a simple refactoring? No, actually I just, uh, I just saw this while I was working on something completely else. And I said, oh my God, 2000 <laughs> function, let's split it apart. That's it. I mean, no, no other motivation. No, because really um, I, I need this kind of refactoring because I would like to create a new pod that has the same um, resources disk as the uh, VR launcher pod has. And I need this, uh, this kind of information are only in that function. Yeah, this is uh, a, a great example of, uh, of, you know, of sometime when, if it was already refactored, I guess your work would be a lot easier. Yeah, definitely. So for my take on this is that uh, specifically long functions don't really scare me. But um, uh, usability or reusability, this is something that, um, that is really um, interesting and provides more, um, more motivation to do refactoring. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, I agree, it provides more uh, motivation, but I think that um, basically for code to be maintainable, you should look at a function and basically instantly know what it's doing and what are the stages it's going through. If you see like a huge messy function, yeah, um, splitting it, splitting it to, to segregated functions doesn't always provide more insight or help readability. No, but but in, that in that function, in that function, for example, we have a boolean just uh, because yeah. I think it's the attachment pod or uh, another pod that is. You no, know, I think it's done for the first uh, wait for first consumer and. Uh, it's very hard to extrapolate uh, the schedulability. I mean, that kind of information, that's, I think, is the reason for that Boolean. So, I mean, there are even, I, I mean, I have a, even a use case for this refactoring. Um, I, can, I can add uh, more information in that, in this PR. But this is exactly what I was doing those days. So <laughs> that's, that's funny that somebody else is working on that. So I have a question. Is it? Is the, the problem in this PR was that uh, you don't get reviews and, and you don't get reviews because it's too complicated to review it or it's too big, too big, too big of a change. It looks like a big change. What, uh, no, what actually, was the problem? I got a lot of reviews, uh, but maybe 10 different reviewers saw this. But uh, my point is that um, seeing a refactoring work, it's very easy to say, oh, this can be a little bit more beautiful. This could be... Uh, uh, um, you know, we should we should do uh, an extra work to 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 make it a hundred percent good. But my point is that uh, I mean, this PR didn't intend to uh, to refactor this uh, this uh, file to you know to be one hundred percent perfect. It just wanted to to do an incremental uh, work that says let's split it up. That's it. Like and and this doesn't converge into you know into being finished because there. Are, constantly reviews about it's not being perfect. Uh, let, oh. me, let me say one thing about uh, this PR that I actually reviewed and I think I 
I actually gave you like lots of pain, like uh, asking for more stuff continuously. But one of the issues here is that you turn something that is like, I agree, a huge, huge, huge mess, and you split it into, I don't know, 10 or 12 huge messes. And I have absolutely no idea of the overall direction that you want to go. Like, I don't know what's the end goal of this, and I don't know what is your, what, let's say, the end-to-end -end plan, like, and you haven't mentioned that anywhere. So it's kind of a little, well, I understand what you're saying. You just want to split this into tinier pieces. Like, it's hard to get a full understanding of what the pieces are. And that's why I, at least I started with the uh, things I started, but at least mm, I think uh, we've reached an understanding. Like uh, you've explained it to me and that's fine. I'm happy with the state of you left it in. But uh, knowing like the overall direction of, uh, like you say, this is the first piece to achieving like uh, something a lot better. Well, describe a little bit what's the end goal like what not the, the end goal like what's the end state that you're trying to to achieve okay so let me reply to you and what Vladik said earlier so i don't think sure. you know i think that Vladik is right um that uh, function being big is not like uh, a rule to to always break it apart uh, but i do think that every you know unit of the code um should be uh, cohesive as much as possible meaning that if you look at a function, you should know what it's doing and you should know and it, and it should do a specific task and do it well. Um, we have a, a one function to render all aspects of the pod creation. So what I said was, OK, let's break it apart to, to some uh, to, to different rendering aspects. Uh, we're first we're rendering the volumes here and we're seeing uh, which volumes we should create. Okay, then we are dealing with the sources and then we're dealing with, I don't know. And, and I thought, okay, let's split it up to cohesive functions that this way we can see the steps that, that the function you know, takes in order to complete its goal. Um, so of course, not every uh, long function is bad and not uh, splitting it apart is not always the solution. But I think that in this specific case, it makes a lot of sense. So it does, it does. I, I think I'm, go I, I'm, going, I'm going back now to what Vladik said and based on the story that I hear now, I tend to agree with him. So first of all, let's start. The fact that you started the refactoring, I think it's a very, very good thing. Second of all, the fact that 10 people maybe contributed to the review is also a very good thing because then 10 people care about it. And now the problem is that maybe 10 people are, don't agree with each other or it's very hard to continue with the PR because you have 10, 10 opinions. But this is like the nature of our work in, uh, in the open source. There is no way to get out of this. The only way to resolve it, I guess, in a quicker way is just to set meetings and try to explain yourself and maybe get the other side opinion um, in, in more, maybe you'll understand it better. At least this worked for me in some, in some similar cases. Because sometimes what you understand is not what the other side understands. And if you talk with him, you would just understand it and that's it. Right, so I, I fully agree that I would like to hear a lot of op opinions and that it's very good that I had a lot of reviewers and that's all great. Um, and, and, and if it's not good enough, then you know I would like to hear about it. But my point is that we don't need the, what should the expectation be right this is my question should the expectation be if you refactor something you should refactor it until it's 100 percent uh, you know the best code that could be there um or we can say okay you can refactor something but not complete you, you know all the refactoring work um, and if this pr gets us to a better state than now let's merge it right away and then do uh, further pr um, for further work. I, I don't think that, that what's uh, blocking this PR is people not agreeing with me on stuff. It's that people, you know, look at all the code that changed here, which is a lot of code that I didn't write, you know, all of it more or less. Um, but uh, um, they're looking at the code and say, and they're saying, is it perfect? Can I, can I say something that will make it better? But, but 
you know, it's not, again, it's not the code that I write, that, that I written. All, all I want to do is, you know, make things one step better. That's it. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's the only, the, the challenge that you have in this case is to explain what is your goal in a, in a way that is, like, it makes sense, when, which sometimes is hard. For example, one way to explain it is I want to cover, uh, to create uh, some basic test that will show uh, how things are working in a, in a readable way. Just, uh, this is just an example. But you could say I want to, my main goal is to decouple some code out of a specific uh, package, stuff like that. If you can define it like that and, and you, you reach this goal, then it's over. You don't need to do more because you're saying this is my goal, I finished. So Chris, maybe you can look about the PRS description. Um, so what I did right there, oh, no problem. Um, like this is an initial work that breaks apart some of the logic, but not all. Follow-up PRs can continue until we have a clear and clean function. Like that's the intention. The intention is to, to create an initial work that you know gets us one step better, that's all. The question is, did you reach that goal? Um, so that's, a, that's what I think people are confused about. If people are confused about this, then it's better to take them aside and set up a meeting and then just explain what you did and how did, how did you think um, the goal has been reached? Right. I think this uh, conversation would have been more uh, relevant if uh, David and Roman were here, but uh, maybe next time. Yep. Yeah, I guess so. And yeah, I just wanted to point out that you have an approved and an LGTM here. <laughs> like, uh, at least right. you convince right. two home. people. Yeah, I understand that. But at least you've convinced two people that this PR achieves your goal. Yeah, and that wasn't easy, <laughs> as you know. Feel free to, uh, know, to ping me also to uh, set up the Zoom call for you guys to talk specifically about this issue. Uh, that's why it's here. Um, and it's a it's a lot easier to go to talk to people in person than to go back and forth through email or uh, or GitHub comments. Yeah, you're right. So thank you for that. You're welcome. Um, it is eight. Uh, well, I see eight a.m. So, but it's a uh, top of the hour for everybody. Um, so I'm going to say that this will be the last topic and. Um, the rest of the items that we have here in the agenda we'll have to address next week or, um, or via the mailing list in Slack. Um, sorry, I didn't return any minutes to you guys. It's, uh, I actually took one minute. And uh, so I'm going to close out the meeting now. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining. And we will see you next week. Thanks, anyone. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.